there, but the fans, the support. I mean, have this many people show up. Uh, what does it mean for you if it's cool? Yeah, how cool is that, right? You show up. We just got off a plane. We come in. Wonderful police escort back to the uh, uh, to the, um, the the stadium here and. Uh, wonderful ceremony outside coming in here and seeing all these fans uh, uh, supporting our team and our program. I mean, I don't know how you can ask for a whole lot more than that. So uh, I think we're very, we're, we as a team are very grateful for the support that we have uh, here in the community and the university as well. I guess uh, going back to 2018, you guys won it what, six months after softball. You guys in softball played for another national title. You guys played for one and won it now. Female sports, the support, the success, just what does it say about this university? I think that, uh, you know, if you look across the country, the success of our uh, teams here, both male and female, are, are quite impressive. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, we've built a, a really good program here uh, in soccer, but there's a lot of really good programs here in the university. And uh, you know, a lot of teams compete for national championships regularly. And uh, I think that all feeds off of itself as well, right? Uh, success kind of brings along more success and uh, right now we're, we're we're doing quite well so hopefully that helps the others as well. Coach you always talk about the professionalism of your teams you, you might be the only NCAA team in history to compete for a national title twice in the same calendar year <laughs> uh, but w what does it say about this squad that they were able to come back after how last year ended and take care of business in a fashion that ended up very very similar? Yeah you know it, um, it, it's been a really interesting period of time from the fall of last year through the spring and then coming back in the fall and you know that season last year is unprecedented with you know starting in July and then going into November and then starting again in January and playing until May that was a long season and none of us really knew how that was going to have a, a, a physical toll on the kids so coming into this season we didn't really know what what that was going to look like but you know, our, our strength and conditioning staff, our medical team, all of those folks got together and we kept talking about managing the players, managing the bodies, managing their loads. And um, I guess we got it right. Uh, and, and I say this with all respect, I think that it was really hard to try and figure it out. But if you look at the NCAA um, women's soccer tournament this year, there were some powerhouse teams that went out early in the NCAA tournament. You know, Carolina went out in the first round, UCLA went out in the first round, Stanford went out in the first round, and they're really good programs. I just think that there was an effect from the COVID that uh, maybe not all of us uh, fully appreciated, and that none of us knew if we were going to get it right or not. So, you know, fortunately for me, I had uh, the right people around me to, to give us the advice, and we listened when we needed to. How did they get, was it a t just studying, a little bit of guessing and getting it right? I mean, what formula did you take? Oh, it's all the technologies we're using. We're using a lot of technologies. Uh, you know, the whoop bands that the kids are wearing, uh, you know, GPS, heart rate monitors, uh, you know, anything and everything that we can, they're, they're looking at and they're uh, analyzing and they're coming back to me with recommendations on, on the amount of load for each player and uh, for every day, so it's uh, it's been a really interesting uh, period of growth using the science as we did to get where we were. I mean, the other thing that was really interesting was we kept our kids on East Coast time the entire time we were there. So we looked at it, and again, uh, our uh, medical team and strength and conditioning team looked at it and said, "Look, our chance for success is greater if we keep one East Coast team, uh, East Coast time." And we did, and I thought we were sharp. I don't know uh, the number offhand. How many put lives on hold? Kind of maybe they thought last year was going to be it, and then they chose the extra year to come back. Or people like Jalen who had professional aspirations and kind of wanted that one more run. I guess how, how important were those players? Yeah, I think they're probably the two for us that could have gone pro easily last year. Were Jalen and Gabby? They both could have gone. They would have uh, had all kinds of opportunities all around the world if they wanted. And uh, I think probably. Um, looking at the biggest picture and Jalen is so keen on her development and Gabby as well that they looked at it and thought, you know, spending the extra time here um, may help them with the development because once you become a pro, nobody is worrying about your development but yourself, right? All the coaches at the professional level are worrying about winning games so they can keep their jobs and, you know, here we found a, a pretty good uh, formula uh, for player development as well as trying to win games.